I'm Jean-Marc Frangos and I'm, uh, I would say, an industry insider from a telecommunications perspective. I spent a large part of my career in the telecoms uh, industry and I've lived through the um, uh, advent of 2G, 3G, 4G and now 5G. Um, and I've been uh, based in Silicon Valley, I've been present in the Bay Area for about 20 years. So I've seen many generations of innovations uh, throughout my years um, here in Silicon Valley. When we think about 5G, we need to think first of the um, delta, the advantage it brings over 4G, right? Because in the history of time, if you remember, I mean, we're not so far away from the 2G and 3G generation. And uh, 3G, when it came up, was a real piece of progress compared to 2G because it was the data promise. 3G was the first of the mobile um, protocols to implement data. But if you remember, it was really bad. The speed to load a page was dreadful. Uh, when 4G arrived, it was a significant piece of progress. So it was really much better than 3G. So the first question on 5G, because there's a lot of promise behind 5G, is how much does it add to 4G? So I guess the, um, it's a very different situation. 3G was so bad, 4G was really good. So the three pieces of promises, the three important points behind 5G are number one, speed. And speed at the moment with 4G is not bad. I mean, if you do a speed test on your phone, you'll find something in the tens of megabit per second. Um, if you look in the city center somewhere in a very well-served area on very low cell, you'll get 100, one, two, 300. Um, but 5G is promising a gig and a sustained gigabit per second. So that's very significant speed compared to what we have today. And you could ask yourself, what are we gonna do with that speed? <laughs> The second big promise is latency. Latency is a bit of a technical um, subject. It's the round trip delay for the packets to come out of your phone and get to the, um, uh, the network. Basically, it's the, it's the speed of transmission to the network. And you'll say, why is that important? And frankly, it's only important if you are expecting to be doing things in the cloud in a very, very fast way. We'll talk more about that because that's an important point. The third bit behind 5G that we didn't have in 4G is a massive IoT coverage. So we're talking about a million devices per kilometer square. That's very significant. So these are the three big promises behind the 5G technology. So there's many things that are different with 5G and uh, one of the big area that will be different from 4G is that um, industrials or large campuses uh, will be able to get private 5G networks. Now, private 5G networks, might, you might say, why would I need a private 5G network? Well, largely, if you wanna make sure that you have your own coverage for a you know, smart factory, for instance, a lot of industrial um, estates have already gone wireless, uh, but with 5G, it'll have a lot more security on the protocol. It will be much more standard. Uh, and also, you'll be able to manage your data and make sure that you know, your data doesn't go across to places you don't want, you don't want them to go. Another big point is the fact that um, we will be using micro data centers closer to the edge of the network. We need that for 5G because there will be a lot more antennas for that coverage, for that speed and, uh, and that latency. And in order to get, um, uh, to be able to deploy these antennas in, in such numbers, you need to simplify them. You need to get a lot of the uh, smarts of the antennas into data centers. They can't be that far away from the entry point of the network. They have to be at the edge. Now the edge compute will be a significant thing that a lot, of, a, a lot of businesses and consumers will be able to use. It will be very short round trip delay to the handset. It will look like you're running an application on your handset when actually it's running on the network or on the cloud, but a close cloud. The third and last one um, that is really important for people is that, that you'll be able to have slices on the network. A slice on the network is like a private version of your network. Um, so you could think of applications like uh, you know, emergency services, public services, so uh, ambulances and, uh, and uh, emergency services, that's one, that's obvious. But you could have the same in a private setting. You could have um, things like uh, a command and control network, for instance, for, uh, for an enterprise that uses a slice of the network that's completely private to you. Some people are um, jokingly saying that the most used application on 5G is speed test, uh, simply because people are really interested in testing that fabulous one gigabyte speed. Do they get it on their smartphone? 
Uh, but more seriously, I think we'll see the number one, probably the, one of the number one consumer applications will have to do with AR and VR, if it democratizes. And I'm sure you know that for those of you who have tried that uh, there's always a little lag between the, um, the, the time you turn your head, the time the display shows something different, and that gets people nauseous at the moment. Now, what will happen, I think, is that uh, 5G with a very short uh, round-trip delay, that will make this much smoother, and these applications will feel a lot more natural. So we're expecting in the industry that AR and VR will be significantly improved, I would say, the experience behind it by 5G. That's certainly one application. Another one in the consumer space has to do with gaming. Now today, frankly, you don't need 5G for mobile gaming. Mobile games work very well, thank you, on 4G. The new idea and the application that's come out of Korea in the early days of their launch is that um, eSports, which is about spectating on uh, particularly you know, uh, games that you play online, um, has led to a new uh, attitude from gamers, which is to say, I'm spectating a game, but at some point, I'd like to get into the game. I'd like my character to project itself into the game in real time. Now, that will require 5G, because today, the delay that you have on 4G doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, you can take buffers of one or two seconds to make sure everything's smooth, but in order to be able to project a character in the game and not have two seconds delay, you'll need 5G. Now, the third application surely is more in the enterprise industrial space, and it will be more around the idea of remote managing devices and uh, piloting things like drones or piloting um, you know, construction equipment, for, for instance, cranes. Now, this is all feasible today with proprietary wireless protocols or wires, but you'll be able to do it very um, efficiently, I would say, with 5G in the future. And again, we're expecting that there will be a propagation and, and a lot more of these robots that get remote controlled um, or robots that get a lot more intelligence out of 5G because they can tap the cloud and they can have access to algorithm intelligence and uh, you know, computer vision or natural language programming, allowing them to behave very naturally with very little onboard intelligence because they can get all that from the cloud in a very short round trip delay. Clearly 5G will uh, be probably one of the reasons why AI will democratize in a, in a significant way. Um, the reason being that with edge compute um, and with the ability to store your applications and run your applications on the edge of the network, like three to five milliseconds away from your smartphone, as opposed to 10 times more today on the 4G network. I mean, an example could be that you get not just smartphones using these applications, but robots. I mean, there was an example at CES last year of the suitcase that follows you in the airport. I know a lot of people have seen that, that demonstration. That suitcase is actually not that smart. Uh, I mean, it has a number of things to help, you know, uh, a camera that helps you find where you're going. Uh, but you could imagine a whole series of devices that use a fairly simple, like a camera, and then use 5G and cloud-based AI to decide what to do, where they should go, you know, who they should be avoiding, you know, who's the master they should be following, understand and listen to the language of people around them, respond potentially to this in natural language. These are devices that will democratize. Today, they would be expensive. You would need to have a lot of onboard intelligence on the device. This can then run you know, in the 5G days on the network and at the edge of the network, meaning that it will be quasi-immediate response time. IoT today uh, is pretty well served with 4G. There's a lot of choice for uh, deploying IoT in 4G. I think 5G will become important when you get to the very massive IoT deployments, the millions of sensors, and particularly outside, not in a building where you have a choice with Wi-Fi and you have a choice with Bluetooth and other protocols. When you're outside, like agricultural applications, when you need millions of different sensors, then 5G will become relevant. But for now, 4G is pretty good. In uh, 5G, there will be a number of players, right? I mean, it starts with the um, equipment manufacturers. And you could say it was, in a way, stimulated in a big way by the equipment manufacturers. They're the biggest winners when there's a generational change in infrastructure, right? So clearly, these guys, whether we're talking about Ericsson or Nokia, Huawei, uh, they will be out there picking up some of the, um, the good uh, value of 5G. The operators, the mobile operators are 
somewhere in the middle of that value chain and they feel they have to deploy 5G, there's certainly no way for them to stay, no, we're going to be stuck with the last, with the previous generation in 4G, they have to deploy 5G. However, as we've already discussed in terms of, you know, what are going to be the applications, is there much value in there that they can get out of 5G? That, that, that's where the jury is a little bit out and there's multiple, you know, uh, discussions around this in the telecoms industry and some CEOs have been you know, saying a lot of good things, a lot of uh, medium good things about 5G, but the 5G network will be there deployed by mobile operators. Now on top of that, of course, you have the, um, uh, I would say the, the cloud uh, players. The cloud players will be really important because of the fact that the 5G protocol will be using the cloud a lot more than the 4G protocol. You know, as we've said before, the more cells means the necessity to take some of the smarts of these antennas into the cloud. And the cloud players will be really important in running the 5G, in helping the operators run the 5G network. So we'll see that for the first time in a, in a, in a significant way. Um, and those, um, uh, you know, the cloud players will be important, but the application uh, and the software uh, players on top of them will also be uh, quite important. A lot of the, uh, of the activity around 5G at the moment is about how do you run this new generation network which will be a lot more software centric. I mean, there's a lot of talk about software defined networking. That's been the talk in the telecoms industry for a number of years, but it's coming to reality with 5G because with 5G, we will need to run the smarts of the network in the data center. And there will be a significant question as to how we organize these pieces of software that actually govern upon the network functions themselves and how we orchestrate them. So there's a lot of activity in the startup uh, domain at the moment, which is revisiting some of the SDN uh, uh, you know, technologies effectively to make them more applicable and more easy to use when we deploy 5G. And of course, there's a lot of activity around trying to invent the killer application for 5G. And what will be that, you know, very short round trip delay application. Again, VR and VR applications, uh, remote control of things. So these are pockets of activity in the startup world. So what you'll see with 5G is 5G will deploy progressively, right? And it will be, the network will be using both 5G and 4G at the same time. And your handset is smart enough to also be using Wi-Fi at the same time and 3G. So I think from an end user perspective, it will be fairly smooth and transparent. People won't see, uh, you know, of course, they'll see the little 5G symbol at the top of the, uh, of the smartphone. But really, it will be smoothed out by devices. So I'm not expecting that uh, it will look like a radical displacement of anything. People are debating whether Wi-Fi will disappear because 5G is so good and it has so much bandwidth and it, it's got so much speed. But the reality of it is Wi-Fi also is evolving. I mean, it's getting better all the time. There's Wi-Fi 6 now. That's the new version of Wi-Fi. It's kind of following the same curve of progress. So I'm not expecting Wi-Fi to disappear. Right? I'm expecting all these uh, ways of communicating to work together in smarter and smarter handsets. We already know that uh, you know, the US has launched 5G, even though the versions of 5G that have been launched are you know, in, in different, different types of 5G. I mean, Verizon has been um, uh, quite advanced in leading the charge on um, you know, fixed wireless access, which uses the high end of the 5G spectrum to replace your home fiber network or your home fiber supplier. Uh, that's one application of 5G, which is not the full scale 5G. And then there are other applications that, are, that look more like the classic mobile uh, smartphone 5G application, which have been launched in Korea and in the US um, and progressively in Europe. So Europe has already started. Um, you know, the thing is, none of this has been done at full scale yet. And uh, remains to be seen what happens in Japan during the Olympic Games. Uh, the Japanese rollout will be much more full-scale rollout. So we'll see what happens then. But I'm expecting that uh, 5G will be picked up by users. Um, whether users are prepared to pay more for 5G is another question. I mean, the elasticity of the, uh, the demand there and the pricing is, is uh, something that hasn't really been tested. At the moment, the Koreans and uh, some of the early launches are trying to price 5G a little bit above 4G. Um, I think the jury's out as to whether uh, in the consumer space there'll be a lot more average revenue per user in 5G than there is in 4G. Surely there are applications in, um, in the industrial and in the business uh, domain um, that will be more mission critical that might yield a uh, much better uh, you know, margin and certainly um, uh, revenue.
I think the talent will be that different than the talent that enterprises or startups use today in the present uh, mobile domain. Um, I'm certainly expecting mobile operators to make it reasonably seamless uh, for application developers to use 5G. What we'll see though is that for the first time the network, the cloud, the cloud players and the application players will really work together uh, because the performance is so important on, on 5G. I mean what you'll get out of 5G is that very high performance. So real-time AI is something that you need to tune perfectly and these three blocks of people will work together. The application guys, the, the cloud guys and the network vendors will need to work much more closely together than they do today in the 4G world.